I have said, Ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Most High. Because, 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 hey. For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace, and for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest, until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness, and the salvation thereof as a lamp that burneth. And the Gentiles shall see thy righteousness, and all kings thy glory, and thou shalt be called by a new name, which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all praises, honor, and glory to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Mechakwadash. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father in the ancient Hebrew. Ba'ashem means in the name of, and Yahweh Shah is the name of his only begotten son, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. I want to give double honors to the apostles of Great Millstone and peace and blessings to the elect. Um, this is going to be a continuation of uh, Daniel, the 11th chapter. All right, going into um, the history of it. And uh, last time, basically left off uh, at around... I believe the 11th uh, verse or so all right so uh today you know i'm just gonna focus on the 12th verse all right going to a little bit of the history behind that and um just a recap for the verses above where <clears throat> we are at the point where um i believe this was the fourth syrian war which took which was um between antiochus the third degree and um ptolemy the fourth philopater all right, and it was called the uh, Battle of Raphia. All right, where they went to war. All right, as it says here in verse 10, but his sons shall be stirred up. And those sons, we're talking about the sons of Seleucus II. Um, I believe it was uh, uh, Callinicus. All right, but let's just make sure on that. Seleucus II. Yeah, Callinicus. All right, so those, it was his two sons. All right, the main ones. Um, which were Antiochus the third, all right, and um, Seleucus the third, Seronis, all right. So they were stirred up. It says, and shall assemble a multitude of great forces, and one shall certainly come and overflow and pass through, because um, the one that that certainly came was Antiochus the third, because his brother Seleucus the third had died, all right. So he basically went on. It says, and pass through. Then shall he return and be stirred up even to his fortress. All right, and this was when Antiochus was basically uh, at the at the doorstep of uh, Ptolemy. All right, Ptolemy the fourth, and it says in verse eleven, and the king of the south shall be moved with choler, which is like bitterness, all right, or anger, and so that was um, and that king of the south was Ptolemy the fourth. It says and shall come and fight with him, even with the king of the north, and he shall set forth a great multitude, but the multitude shall not or shall be given into his hand. And that was the battle of Raphia, which Ptolemy uh, the fourth ended up winning. So it was given into Ptolemy's hand. All right. So now dealing with verse 12, it says, And when he hath taken away the multitude, when he when he wins, his heart shall be lifted up, meaning he got proud. All right. It says, And he shall cast down many ten thousands, but he shall not be strengthened by it. All right. And in a nutshell, what happened was when Ptolemy won, all right, as we're going to read, he basically, you know, went about, uh, 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 you know, checking out the other neighboring nations, you know, being that he had just won, you know, he's now up there. OK, and the the ten thousands that he he casted down. All right. Was uh, us. All right. When you when we go into it. All right. Because when we look up the geography. All right. Let's see. Battle of Raphael. Let's look up the map. Okay, see what we can find here. Hoping they give us a better. All right, so. Um, we know that Israel is around this area. All right, around this whole area here. And uh, Raphia is right here. All right, so if the Battle of Raphia is around this area here. Ptolemy came around to where we were at, okay, and we're gonna read how he casted um while he casted us down, okay. But continue when it says, "But he shall not be strengthened by it," because after he had won that uh that battle, he didn't continue to pursue uh, Antiochus. 
and utterly take him down and conquer him and take his territories. He won. And because he got proud, you know, he was just like, yo, you know, I got this basically. All right. But that was going to be, uh, uh, you know, to his detriment. So now this is the book of third Maccabees, you know, and, and usually we're familiar with uh, first and second Maccabees. All right. But there is a book of third Maccabees and it's basically uh, history. All right. Going into history. All right. And um, this is from BibleGateway.com. All right. So this is third Maccabees, the uh, the second, um, no, the first chapter. All right. Third Maccabees, the first chapter. And I'm going to start at uh, verse um, verse four. All right. And this is basically going into the history of after Ptolemy won against Antiochus, how he affected us, you know. So it says here, uh, when a fierce battle arose, the things and things were going rather well for Antiochus. Uh, Arsenal went out. So Antiochus, you know, it looked like he was he was uh, in the lead. You know, he was doing well. All right. So it says Arsenal went out to Ptolemy's army uh, with pathetic cries and with her hair uh, all in disarray. Uh, she urged them to rescue themselves and their children and wives and bravely promised to give each man two uh, manas of gold if they won the battle. Basically, she was telling them that, you know, to rescue your children and your wives, meaning if you lose this fight, they're going to be taken captives. All right, because Antiochus is going to take it over. Verse 5, so it, so it turned out that the enemies were destroyed in hand-to-hand -hand combat and many were taken prisoner. After overcoming the plot, Ptolemy decided to visit the neighboring cities, see, uh, to encourage them. By doing this and by dis uh, distributing gifts for their sacred shrines, he reassured his subjects. All right, so it says here, Ptolemy Philopater at the temple. It says, and the Jews had sent uh, the Jews had sent elders and members of the council to greet him, and bring gifts of friendship, and to congratulate him on recent events. As a result. He was even more eager to come to them as soon as possible. He traveled to Jerusalem, sacrificed to the Supreme God, made thank offerings, and did what was appropriate for the temple. As he entered the temple, now you would think, oh, all right, so he's not bad, you know, he's, he's well, you know, but we're going to see. So it says, uh, as he entered the temple, he was struck with amazement at its brilliance and beauty. And as he admired the orderly arrangement of the temple, he conceived a notion to enter into the holy place because you know when you look at the temple you have the holy of holies all right where only the a high priest was was able to go once a year all right so he's he's you know seeing the glory of the temple and he's like what's that you know like whoa what's you know what i'm saying like this is dope now i wonder what's in there verse 11 but they said that it wasn't right to do since even those of their own nation weren't permitted to enter it. Not even all the priests were allowed, but only the chief priest who was in charge overall, and he could do so only once a year. But Philopater wasn't at all persuaded. In his mind, he's like, man, man what you talking about, bro? You know, it says even after the law was read to him. All right. So they read it to him, the law as to how only the high priest could go in there, you know, it says even after the law was read to him he continued he continued to claim that it was necessary for him to enter saying even if those persons are denied this honor i shouldn't be all right going going into how his heart was lifted up he was proud he asked why because remember he's an edomite all right it says he asked why when he was entering every why when he was entering every other sacred place none of those uh, present prevented him and someone said, without thinking, that he was wrong to speak of this as a sign. So he was saying, well, when I came through here and went through here, all these sacred places, nobody stopped me. So why, how come, you know, you talking about I can't come here? And so somebody, somebody said, well, you can't, you can't take that as a sign that like you're some divine being or you're above our, our priests to where even if they can't go in there, you could go in there. All right. Verse 15. But even if for some reason this were true, Philopater replied, why should I of all people not enter whether they are willing or not? Verse 16, but the priests fell to the ground, still in their sacred robes. They filled the temple with crying and tears 
praying to the supreme power, which is the Most High, all right, Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, to help them and to change the mind of the only one who was wrongly, um, Salaki, of the one who was wrongly imposing himself. So they were praying that the Lord would put the spirit on, on this demon Ptolemy to change his mind, you know, and to not uh, try to basically, uh, 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 you could say pollute the temple. It says those who were left in the city were troubled and hurried out thinking something mysterious was happening. So they're hearing all these cries. They're hearing the prayers like, yo, what's going on? It says the young girls who had been kept secluded at home rushed out with their mothers. They sprinkled their hair with dust and began to fill the streets with weeping and groaning, which was a sign of uh, mourning. It says even the young women who had just been adorned for their weddings left the bridal bedrooms and had been prepared uh, that had been prepared for for the marriage night neglecting all proper modesty they came together in the city in a wild rush mothers and nurses left newborn children here and there some in houses some in the streets and crowded together into the most the most the most high temple without looking back shows you all right shows you how important you know and how highly we uh, we regarded you know the lord all right and the temple all right and all of that that came above everything else Okay, the Lord came, the Lord comes first. Let me put it like that. But then, hey, you look at our people today, but you know what? There's a reason for that. Let me get a quick precept and then we'll come right back. All right. Um, Jeremiah 17, verse 4. Okay, it says here. All right. You know what? Hold on. Jeremiah 17 and 1, it says, The sin of Judah is written with a pen of iron and with the point of a diamond. It is graven upon the table of their heart and upon the horns of your altars. Whilst their children remember their, their altars and their groves by the green trees upon the high hills. O my mountain in the field, I will give thy substance and all thy treasures to the spoil and thy high places for sin throughout all thy borders. And thou even thyself shall discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee, and I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not, for ye have kindled a fire in mine anger, which shall burn forever. See, and this is this this is uh this was a prophecy that was fulfilled. Okay, we discontinued from our heritage. So as we're we're reading here that they left everything they were doing, alright, to come to the temple to see what was going on and pray, alright, make supplication to the Lord. All right, that told me wouldn't go and pollute it. You look at today, people don't even care. All right, especially our people. Jake don't even care. You know, they've they've discontinued from that heritage. You know, they don't know who they are anymore. And worst of all, they don't even care to know. All right, going to uh, Hosea 4 and 6, they're destroyed for lack of knowledge. All right. But because they rejected knowledge. All right. So it says here. Um, the people who assembled offered all kinds of prayers on account of the evil plot of the king. So you see, he came up in there. Everything was all good. So he wanted to enter that holy, that holy of holies, you know, and they told him, no, you can't do that. Then it's like, oh, you know, now he's like, nah, you know, I'm going to do it. They're saying, no, you can't do that because there's certain things that the mo you know, no man is above. All right. An example being, um, uh, What's his name? Uh, I believe it's uh, Uzziah. All right, King Uzziah. Uh, let me see if that account is here. All right, where he basically, being a king, uh, tried to uh, offer incense upon the altar, but he couldn't do that. All right, you can't, you can't, at the time, at least, you know, the kingship and the priesthood were not to be mixed. They weren't to be combined into one. All right. So let me see if I can find that. Um, and, and basically because he tried to do that, the Lord struck him with leprosy. All right. Yeah, here we go. Second Chronicles 26. Um, twenty-six and 14. All right. Showing you that even if you're a king, it doesn't matter what status you are. Certain things you can't just, you just can't do. All right. Second Chronicles 30, 26 and 16, it says, And Uzziah prepared for them uh, throughout all the host shields and spears and helmets and harbing, um, 
harbigeans and bowls and slings to cast stones. And he made in Jerusalem engines invented by cunning men to be on the towers and upon the bulwarks to shoot arrows and great stones withal. And his name spread far abroad, for he was marvelously helped till he was strong. Pride of Uzziah's undoing. All right, it says, but when he was strong, his heart was lifted up to his destruction. That's why the scriptures constantly say, pride goeth before a fall. The second your heart gets lifted up, the scriptures say pride was not made for man. All right. The second your heart gets lifted up, you lose sight of, of, of that, that, that humility, that humble factor. And then instead of honor, that turns to uh, destruction. It says, for he transgressed against the Lord, his power, and went into the temple of the Lord to burn incense upon the altar of incense. Only the priests are supposed to do that. And even, even then, there's a specific way to do it. Because as we read, or as it's written, I believe it's in the book of Exodus, two of Aaron, Aaron the high priest's sons were put to death because they offered strange fire to the Most High. All right? You know, with the incense burning. Verse 17 says, And Azariah the priest went in after him. So, was, you can picture Uzziah goes in there, you know, he's going to go uh, uh, um, offer incense, you know, upon the altar. And then the, the priest, it says here, Azariah the priest went in after him. And with him, fourscore priests of the Lord that were valiant men. All right. Now, uh, four score, that's 80. A score is 20. Four times 20 is 80. All right. So now when you look up the word valiant. All right. It says, uh, Hayalah. Okay. If I'm reading that right, Hayalah. Uh, it says here, strength, ability, force, strength, mighty. All right. So you might think. You know, usually when people hear priests, they think of like, because of, they think of like Edomites, you know, like skinny, you know, lanky and all of that. No. All right. <laughs> it says, um, verse 28, and they withstood Uzziah the king. Let's look up the word withstood. See if they'll give us a bit of context on it. All right. It says to remain, to delay, to make a stand, hold one's ground. All right, we, which we pretty much understand what the word withstood means. All right, but um, it says here, they withstood Uzziah the king and said unto him, it appertaineth not unto thee, Uzziah, to burn incense to the Lord, but to the priests, the sons of Aaron, that are consecrated to burn incense. Go out of the sanctuary for the most high, uh, for thou hast trespassed, neither shall it be for thine honor from the Lord thy power. See, Oh, as the Lord through Samuel said, I believe this was to Saul, that as the Most High have uh, delight in, um, ooh, let me actually pull that up. Let's see, uh, delight in burnt. Yep. Uh, uh, 1 Samuel 15 and 22. And Samuel said, hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and, and to hearken than the fat of rams. All right. So, hey, um, going back to this here, you got to, you know, obey the Lord above all. What happened to, I believe that his name was Uzzah, as the ark, you know, was going to fall and he tried to reach for it, even though in his mind, all right, he was going to uh, uh, protect the ark. He wasn't obeying what the Lord said. He wasn't sanctified to touch that ark, and he was put to death. All right. Same thing with Saul. He was told, go and slay the Amalekites, all of them. He comes back with the Amalekite king and, and goods from the Amalekites, and that's disobedience. So that's why it was it was written there in uh, 1 Samuel 15. So Uzziah was also guilty of that. That's why we read it here, that for thou hast trespassed, neither shall it be for thine honor from the Lord power. He's not going to honor it. All right. Verse 19. Then Uzziah was wroth. He was angry and had a censer in his hand to burn incense. And while he was wroth with the priests, all right, he was pissed off. The leprosy even rose upon his forehead before the priests in the house of the Lord and beside uh, from beside the incense altar. And boom. Verse 20. And, and Azariah, the chief priest and all the priests looked upon him 
and behold, he was leprous in his forehead. And they thrust him out from thence. Yea, himself hasted also to go out, because the Lord had smitten him. And boom, 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 there you go. Oh, actually, I'll read verse 21. It says, And Uzziah the king was a leper unto the day of his death, and dwelt in a, in a several house, being a leper, for he was cut off from the house of the Lord. And Jotham his son was over the king's house, judging the people from the uh, the people of the land. All right. So going to show you, there's just certain things that you you can't even do, regardless of your rank. All right. If, in terms of disobeying the Lord, see. So that's why um, the, the 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 priest withstood him, regardless of whether he was a king or not. Okay. So going back to Third Maccabees, uh, one in uh, where we at now? Okay. Uh, I think I was on um. 21 let me see yeah all right verse 21 it says the people who assembled offered all kinds of prayers on account of the evil plot of the king verse 22 some of the bolder citizens weren't going to put up with this with his intended plan or fulfill what he had in mind they railed or rallied each other to attack with weapons and to die courageously for the sake of the law of the ancestors creating a great uproar in the holy place. The old men and the elders were, were barely able to restrain them, but turned them uh, to last, the, turned them at last to the same stance of prayer. Now, if I, I believe this was before the, t uh, the time of uh, Judas and his brothers, you know, with Mattathias, because um, this was, um, uh, that was, that was uh, uh, dealing with Antiochus Epiphanes, but Antiochus Epiphanes was actually the son all right, he was actually one of the sons of um, Antiochus III, who was fighting in this war that Ptolemy won. All right, so this this occurred uh, before that time of Judas Maccabees. All right, so it says now the crowd uh, in front of the temple was occupied in praying, but the elders standing near the king tried in many ways to turn his arrogant mind from the scheme that he had conceived. But he, being made bold and ignoring all their arguments began to make his approach determined to carry out his plan so he was not trying to hear it so when those who were near with near him saw this they turned together with the people to appeal to the one who was fully able to come to their aid and not to overlook this insolent transgression so they prayed they turned to the most high because that's really all they, that uh, that we could do it says an immense roar went up from the intensity and passion of the crowd's concerted shouting Indeed, it seemed that not only the people, but also the walls and the entire land were echoing. Because, because at that time, all were prepared to accept death instead of making the holy place impure. All right. So you see how, how zealous all right, our people were? Fast forward to the future and you see all this yeah, madness. All right. So now... Uh, continuing now, I'm going to jump here. This is the book of, uh, still in the book of 3rd Maccabees, but 2nd chapter and uh, the 21st verse. Now, when you read the verses above, it's going into the prayer. All right, that was offered, it says here, by uh, the, uh, the high priest Simon. All right, so this um, prayer, he prayed to the Lord, and this is what the Lord did. You know, similar to um, uh, when Heliodorus, you know, which also that, that had to have taken place after this, but when he came and they prayed to the Lord, and he, the Lord basically, you know, sent them angels to give him a, design, a divine uh, ass whooping. All right. So it says here, punishment of Ptolemy Philopater, uh, verse 21. It says, then the most high who watches over all things, the first father of all, holy among the holy ones, heard this lawful prayer and scourged the one who had claimed too much for himself in his violence and arrogance. The Most High shook him this way and that as a reed is shaken by the wind, with the result that he lay helpless on the ground. So, you know, I mean, from visualizing, he probably looked like he was, you know what I'm saying, like catching a seizure or something, you know, on some, on some, on some like Harlem shake kind of thing. But then it says he was, he was paralyzed after. It says his limbs were paralyzed and he was unable to speak since he was struck by a just judgment. His friends and bodyguards saw that the punishment that had seized him was severe, fearing even his life might fail. They quickly dragged him out since since they were uh, 
terror-stricken. After a while, the king recovered, and even though he had been punished, he didn't change his heart and mind at all, but went away issuing bitter threats. All right, and we're going to read just a, a bit about what what he, he intended to do. And uh, even going to show you that, hey, look, the Lord constantly uh, um, divinely intervened on our behalf. All right, even in cases like this. So how much more for now, all right, dealing with the elect, which are really the, the last, the, the, the little bit, that small remnant that's left, that's doing their best to serve the Lord. You think he's not going to stand up for us, you know, low willing world of that number, that much more? Of course he is. All right, so verse 25, it says, Ptolemy, Philopater, and the Alexandrian Jews, when he had returned to Egypt, he added to his evil deeds with the assistance of his drinking companions and friends. Who were strangers to everything just meaning they, they weren't you know what i'm saying they didn't they didn't know how to do anything right they were all wicked he wasn't satisfied with his innumerable uh indecent acts but he also advanced to such a degree of impudence that he circulated false reports in various districts many of his friends took note of the king's purpose and followed his lead he purposed to spread blame publicly against the jewish nation he set up a stone near the tower in the courtyard with the following inscription carved upon it. None who refuse to sacrifice are to enter into their sanctuaries. In addition, all the Jews are to be registered and their property catalogued. Those who are object, Oslake, those who object are to be taken by force and put to death. Those who are registered are to be branded on the body by fire with the ivy leaf sign of Dionysus. And it's, 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 hey, it's spiritual because Esau is really trying to brand people now with that with that chip, all right? Which is the sign or the mark of that, you know, that beast. It says, um, so it says here, branded on the body by fire and uh, the fire with the ivy leaf sign of Dionysus and are also to be assigned to their former limited civic status. Now you imagine you going and getting branded with the symbol of another God on your body. That's like if your woman comes back with a tattoo of another man on her body. You know, whoa, what, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know, what, what does that look like? Verse 30, it says, but, but so as not to seem hateful at all, or hateful to all, he added, but if any of them should prefer to join those who have been initiated into the mysteries, these are to enjoy political rights equal to the Alexandrians. Now some Jews, while pretending to detest the steps to be undertaken for city's religion, readily surrendered themselves to share in great fame through the association they would have with the king. You see, so, and, and this happened always throughout you would have those Israelites, you know, that low key, you know, would want to, you know, uh, uh, forsake our our customs. You know, like it says, they were pretending to detest what what Ptolemy was saying, but low key, they they were like, nah, I, I, I'll do it. You know, yeah, oh, no, oh, this guy is so wicked. Give me that chip. You know, because they, like it says, they wanted to share in that fame and so on and so forth. It says, but the honorable majority were strong and didn't depart from their religion. They bravely tried to save themselves from being registered by resorting to bribes in exchange for their lives. They remained hopeful of obtaining help and they looked with contempt on those Jews who had deserted them. They considered those who gave, gave in to be the enemies of the Jewish nation and no longer associated with them or offered them assistance. All right. And, um, as you keep reading on, you know, in, in the book, it'll tell you many other things that uh, Ptolemy did uh, against us, you know, uh, um, as an example of, of how he cast us down. OK, so, uh, yeah, that's pretty much where I'm going to end it. All right. I know it's just uh, one verse, but I just wanted to go into the background of that. OK, um, so with that, I hope you were edified. In closing, I want to give all praises, honor and glory to Yahweh, Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem, Rakha Kudash. Until next time, Shalom.